Yo, all right, what is up, my boys? I'm Cody Austin here, demographic transition model. I'm a sophomore in high school. I got about five on my uh, human geography test just last year, and they let me do this whole thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, there's not very much attendance it's, looks like, it's looking like today, but I'm going to give everyone a minute just to show up if they are going to be here. So we're going to sit around awkwardly while waiting for uh, our our vast, just expansive followers to show up. Because I, I might be just the most popular streamer on the platform. We we got one person here. I'm going to wait till that clock goes up one number. I'm just going to start. What is up, whoever is on Think Fiveable? I'm not seeing anyone else show up. The clock is... Pretty close to changing over. The clock has changed over. It is time to begin. Which one of these is my slides? It's this one. All right, boys. All right, you're, you're fine. Sherelle, we got Sherelle here. That's all we need. That's the entire. That's everyone in the class in the entire country. All right. As I said, the demographic transition model. If you're watching this. If it's after now, I assume you've been over in the class, so this is going to be some nice review for you, I would say. But before we start anything, make sure you are following Think Fiveable on all of their social medias. They have a lot of cool things to say about the program, what's going on. They keep you updated on those streams, everything that's happening, changes in the way we're doing stuff. And they, they just got some good stuff. It's just Think Fiveable. They have YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. It's not hard. Uh, if you want a Discord, because uh, we do have one. I can get it to you at the end of the stream. All right. This stream, what are we going? We're just going to quickly run through some knowledge, what you had before the stream, because I would imagine you've been briefly over it, at least in class by now. I want to see where you guys are at to know what, where I have to go. Uh, five stages DTMs for high stationary or expanding all that stuff. It's just the bits of it, the entire, you know, graph, that whole thing. We're going to practice what we learned, see where you are after, from your pre-stream knowledge to after the stream, see if I did anything decent. Q&A, what do you guys want to see? What have you been over in class recently that you just didn't get very good? It's, it's that easy. So the demographic transition model, it's this crazy thing, right? Um, it, it doesn't look too bad when you really, when you really take it in. There's a couple lines, but really it's just a graph. You'll see... The green line right there on the top, this one in case, I don't know, you can't see it too good. And that is the birth rate. It's just how many people are being born as opposed to this death rate. How often is someone dropping dead? Uh, that's not too good if a lot of people do that. So obviously you'll see in this blue area that that's the amount of natural increase. Now natural increase, as you might be able to guess, is the rate at which the population is expanding. Clearly, if birth rate is higher than death rate, the population has to go up. If death rate is higher than birth rate, some real wacky stuff happens that you don't like. Uh, this black line is just showing the total population over time. And we're going we're gonna to take a deeper look at this in every section. You can see where the little lines are. I say that like you can see me pointing. These little lines are. Uh, we're going to look at each one of these in a lot more depth as opposed to just the entire graph. But before we do that, skills assessment. All right. So what trends is this trying to display? What is it trying to predict? And more importantly, uh, I would say more, more probably as importantly, um, what are the um, what is it trying to predict in relation to? If it's trying to say this, what is it saying this in relation to? Because there's a lot of very similar graphs to the demographic transition model. And it's important to know what the subtle differences are because they show the same thing, but they're trying to explain something else. I don't... If you're uh, if you're on the VOD, there's not a lot of people here, so I might just have to answer these questions after giving you a second to think. I'll give you your second to think, Mr. VOD viewer. All right, that was your hot second to think. If you still got to think, pause the video. So demographic transition model, it's trying to show changes in population over time, but the thing that really sets it apart for something like the epidemiological transition model, which is a really long name for something that just is sick, um, it's showing it in relation to um, industrialization and economy and 
invention, inventions related to that, advancements related to that. Next question, what countries are currently considered to be in stage one? That is obviously the first stage. It's this wacky one right here. Wow, that's pretty crazy. What countries would be considered to be in there contemporarily, like right now? What country would you look at and say, yeah, it's a stage one country. I'll give you your second to think, and then you're just going to have to pause the video. That was your second to think. Now, here's the crazy bit. They're only small and remote groups. You are absolutely correct, Sherelle. Uh, I've just come across the realization. If I'm saying your name wrong, you emphasize the I. I'm sorry, and you can you should probably tell me that. Um, but yes, there are no countries considered to be in stage one. There's remote groups primarily in the Amazon Amazonian area. And in Bangladesh, you can find some rural communities in there. I am getting your name right. That's cool. I just said that and I was like, I don't know if I'm doing this. And that would be really unfortunate for me. But yes, very small local groups. No country as a whole is in that anymore, which is pretty cool. Final question. Final question. What event led to Australia? That's actually, apparently they're also in Australia. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. What was the other country you mentioned? Bangladesh. Um, I remember you can find some small communities in there. Australia was unbeknownst to me. I guess it makes sense in that bit right there. Australia. Uh, last question. What events led to areas moving to the second stage of the demographic transition model and the third stage of the tra demographic transition model? Say that five times fast. You can't. What led the population uh, conditions to go from this to something more like this. And we'll go over exactly what that means. Uh, I'm, is that Aborigines? I don't know the, the real fancy Australian words. I know the ones that are just English. It's Aborigines. Aborigines in Australia would be a stage one area. That's cool. You learn something new every day. That's real crazy. I'm going to assume... That uh, Aborigines are a group of people on a place. All right. Oh, yeah, that does sound like a group of people on a place. I'm just learning so much about Australia. This is crazy. I, I assume you paused the video by now if you want to think. So what popped people into the second stage of the demographic transition model was the Industrial Revolution. It started in Britain and it spread out. You see that? You see a, a theme there. Western countries generally move on first, and then the rest of them will do it much later. Uh, and the third stage was brought about by the rise and availability of more modern medicine. So you don't die of polio at the age of four. That kind of helps you live longer and the population go up if you don't just die. That's a real wacky concept there, but it, it's true. It's the truth, right? Stage one, it's the first one. Vaccines are a good thing. Vaccinate your children, okay? <laughs> Uh, yeah, vaccines are pretty cool. They make you not die, and they they move you to stage three of the demographic transition model. And why would you want to be below stage three? That's just a strange idea. Stage one, it's the bit highlighted in blue. You see that? Just looking at this, um, can anyone in chat or you watching the VOD think to yourself, what's going on in this graph? Again, the birth rate is this top one. The death rate is right here, and this is the total population. Uh, what are some things you notice about this when you're you're giving it a good stare down? Is there anything uh, you, you really can pick out from the graph? Or maybe your teacher told you when you remember. That was your pause the video moment. If the, uh, oh, whoa, someone else, someone else registered. This is incredible. Let me see who it was. All right. I don't know who, who who this Gracie person is, but they registered, so I assume they'll be showing up. We're going to have just immense, immense levels of participation here. Yes, a lot of folks are being born and a lot of folks are dying. That's a that's a great thing right here that you can see, right? I say great, a great observation, not a great thing. I'm not a massive fan of everyone dying as they're born. Please don't take that out of context, all right? Yes, you can see these are both very high up here. That, that's all you really got to take from this until we go to these. I have my I have my slides closed. I was wondering why the pixels dropped. Is the stream lagging for you guys? My pixels have dropped or is it all good? 
total population is low. Yeah, you'll see. All right, I'm good. I just saw the pixels drop and I started panicking. I, I have minor experience, but enough to know that's generally bad. Yeah, you see the total population is pretty low down there. So the characteristics of stage one of the demographic transition model, yeah, as they pointed out, it's a very high uh, birth and death rate. And you also see that it goes up and down a lot. It's not a nice straight line or a nice curve. It just kind of does what it feels like at the moment. Something's going to happen. It's going to throw everything out of whack. Very, it's very sensitive. Um, and this, uh, the very close and very high um, birth and death rate, it's, of course, when I mean the population stays low and it grows very, very slowly. You're not going to get populations in the billions if everyone's in stage one very easily. I, I guess it could happen if you really went for it, but probably not. Um, you're also going to see episodic famine because this is straight after up to the Industrial Revolution from the Neolithic Revolution, um, which I won't say, yeah, yeah, because post this is uh, hunter-gatherers, right? So this is made caused by the Neolithic Revolution. This is some basic stuff. They don't really use modern techniques or technology. They put some seeds in the ground and hope it grows while they, I thought let's put that on my brain. I'll put that somewhere where it won't make noise. And they, they got their cows over there, and hopefully they don't all die of cow cholera, right? It's completely possible for there to be a massive lack of food and half of the people just to drop dead. That kind of happens on from time to time. And you'll see that um, very young people and the elders, I say elders' lifespan is 40s? Elders is not what we would think of as elders, but they're going to die due to a communicable disease very often. If someone gets the flu, um, sorry, John, it's been nice knowing you, but you have to die of the flu now. There's no other option. That's just how it went, right? So here's, uh, here's the example I got here. This is an Amazonian tribe, one of the few places you will see a group that's still in stage one. They got their big bows pointed at something. You can see here, there's no technology that we would consider even close to modern. This is very, very basic. They got a thatch roof right there or a dead tree and it's a bad camera angle. They're in very like open clothes. They're not protected from the elements in those. They're just kind of exposed uh, and they have nothing to protect themselves. They have nothing to, uh, what is the word? Procure supplies. They just have the bare minimum. This is, as I said, it's pre-industrial revolution. They don't have an economy. It's not a basic economy or a small economy. They generally just won't have anything outside of their tribe. Like I give you my fish for uh, for firewood. They don't have a currency. They don't sell things to anyone outside, other than maybe some other stage one groups. Uh, and very small events, a little kerfuffle with a neighboring tribe where 30 people die, it's going to be very important for the population because their population is normally extremely low. There's not enough people to just take that hit. So something that we would think of as very minor, as far as the amount of deaths go, can absolutely devastate these kinds of populations. And for its relation to the epidemiological transition uh, theory, this is in what we would call the age of pestilence and famine. Now, that's a real scary word. That just sounds not very fun. I'm sure you would agree with me when I say that. Um, the age of pestilence and famine certainly is a negative connotation to it. Um, and what that really means is that, well, famine, there's going to be starving. There's going to be no food. Ow. And then communicable diseases are going to be very effective at killing people until they can get an immunity, people are just going to kind of drop dead from it. If they mutate very fast, they're going to regularly drop dead from it. And that's going to be the big killer. You're not going to see anything that you would expect to see later in life. Anything that you would expect to see because of man-made activities, it's that kind of stuff that kills everyone. And that's all That's all stage one. Uh, if anyone needs me to go back and go over something, reiterate it, I can, but I'm going to start moving on to stage two. Let me see if I have questions. I got no questions. It's that easy. Stage two, it's this bit right here. 
I'm going to give everyone on the VOD the second to pause the stream. I'm going to see if anyone in the chat notices anything about here because there's there's a lot more going on here than there was in the first one. There's a lot more to notice. Uh, if you're watching the VOD, pause now. Well, I really hope you enjoyed your good think, Mr. VOD, Mrs. VOD, other viewer VOD. Uh, I, I hope you got a good answer in your head. We're going to look back at the chat. The chat seems to be pretty sterile, which I understand. Uh, there's there's not a lot of people. You don't got to answer everything. Um, but when you look at this, what you should see is that this death rate line right here has suddenly just nosedived. It fell. Whoops, I tripped and I didn't catch myself. It keeps going down very fast. Whereas the birth rate, when you do here to here, it's starting to fall, you could say, but really it's quite constant, which means you have this incredibly high birth rate from the first stage, but the death rate is much, much lower, which of course means that this whole natural increase thing is suddenly <clears throat> is suddenly quite massive. When reflecting the total population, if you look at this, that looks like exponential growth. It's just going to zoom on out of here. You're about to see a vertical line on your chart. There is just an incredible amount of people that suddenly showed up with this development. Now, if we look at the characteristics of stage two of the demographic transition model, we will see, as I said, the birth rate is extremely high and the death rate just falls, plummets, nosedives, hits the floor. It is gone. And that means that the population is growing extremely fast. Total population, it's exponential growth. Mouth, this is screaming at the top of his lungs. Look at all of these people that just showed up. But uh, the famine has sort of started to become a much rarer occurrence, actually. I'm sorry, Malthus, you're still wrong. Uh, farming techniques have just generally improved. They have a massive abundance that, a lot, that allowed them to get to this point because how they get to this point is usually, is usually the industrial revolution. And of course, you need a very large surplus to move on to industry. Um, and if they've been through the Industrial Revolution, one may assume, hey, I think they have industry from that whole in industry revolution. Um, and we will see, yeah, they, they have industry. They have an economy. That's crazy. Um, and this economy is very, very uh, primary. If you don't know what primary is, which you may not, I think I got that like halfway through the year. Um, primary economy, they get natural resources from the earth and then they sell it. They mine coal to be used for something else. They mine iron to be used for something else. And they don't make anything out of it themselves. They might refine it or they'll just give it, uh, but they're selling the actual resources. They'll sell wheat, they'll sell meat, that kind of stuff. But it's very, it's a massive change. Ooh, that's a, that's a bit of a bra moment. I'm getting a call right now. That's not what I wanted. I'm just going to tell them I have to call them later because it is someone kind of important. But I'm going to keep talking while I do that. So it is a massive change to see absolutely no real interaction as far as economy goes outside of your little group to suddenly having a real international economy, even if you are only doing the basics. All right. As I said, industry revolution, all that cool stuff. Um, areas that we can see in this, some examples of it, they're going to be very poor areas. A lot of sub-Saharan Africa falls under this. The big, um, the big outlier of that being South Africa, which is significantly more developed. But some specific countries, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Nicaragua. Nicaragua is what we have this picture of. Um, as you can see, they don't have a lot of money. They're pretty poor. But they're in a much better situation than Thatch Hut in the middle of the woods. They probably have this house in a community of sorts, and they have a house that actually protects them from the elements to a decent extent. It has a roof without holes in it. It doesn't need eight feet of thatch to, see, to stop the water coming in. That's always nice. As that is a very primary economy, people are going to work on the farms or in the mines. They're not going to go, I don't know, work at your local Publix as a cashier. As much, there's not a lot, not, it's not a big service thing. There's definitely not a big quinary or quaternary economy. Um, those being computers, obviously, they're not going to be big on that yet. And they're not going to be big on uh, business management, that kind of thing. 
they're going to have a couple of it to manage those big uh, was material gathering companies, but that's about it. There's not gonna be a lot of small businesses. And on the epidemiological transition model, it's the same model we were looking at, but it's trying to tell you about diseases and the causes of death. Uh, we are in the age of receding pandemics. You will still see the majority of deaths due to these infectious diseases, but since people have a massive surplus of food, they have access to money, which can get them things to live a better lifestyle. And they already just as an average have moved up to a better lifestyle. They aren't in, they aren't constantly exposed to the elements of that sort of thing. Uh, they're going to live longer, even if they're being killed by the same things. Stage three. Uh, anyone need something from stage two? I don't think the that Gracie person you registered ever showed up. They did not. We got one. We got one person here. It's just, it's my my good friend Sherelle. Ah, uh, yeah. We we still got the one person. I don't think they're going to need help. They kind of teach this thing. So we're just going to start moving on. I I closed my slides again. I'm I'm so talented at streaming. Okay. Stage three, we got this one right here. Again, if you are watching on the VOD, you should pause the video now. I really hope you had a good think about that one. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you might have taken a little longer. I, I, I felt that you're about five minutes to think about. It was a big thing, but you probably got something pretty good out of that, huh? So when you're looking at this chart, we got the bit highlighted in the fiveable blue. What a nice color, the fiveable blue. Am I not correct? You will see that while the death rate is still falling quite fast, I would add, it is slowing down exponentially, I might add. Um, and the birth rate has also begun falling. That's going to tell you a little bit about the changes in society going on at this stage, as opposed to just having 18 kids. I should have discussed that. Small tangent. Um, you might be asked, why do people have such massive amounts of kids uh, in stage one and stage two? Now, you could say, and this is what we all tried to say at the beginning of my AP Human Geography class, uh, kids are going to die. You need a lot more kids because work is a lot less efficient, that sort of thing. You, you got to have a lot to make sure like at least one survives could use the family line. Um, and my AP Human Geography teacher, he was super cool. Um, and yet... We were told all of these things are incorrect. It is a very simple answer that you really wouldn't see coming. It catches you off guard. Um, the reason we were told as to why birth rate is so high is because people just like having kids. Uh, and there's nothing socially to stop them. There's not a whole lot economically to stop them. They just have a lot of kids because they like to. Uh, that's a bit of a weird one, so you should probably know it because it isn't going to be intuitive. Like, oh, yeah, the, that's my first guess. You want to be analytical because it's an AP class. And sometimes it's just weird and you shouldn't be analytical. But, yeah, uh, death rates fa falling, slowing down, though. Uh, birth rates falling very quickly. You'll see the total population beginning to start to level off. It's definitely still going up. It is not flat but it's slowed down significantly by the end of the stage. Characteristics. Again, the birth rate is, it's plummeting. It's hitting the floor. It's gone. It's walked out the door and the door, it's just a cliff. Whoops. I forgot to put the staircase in. I hate it when that one happens. Uh, the death rate is still dropping, but it's slowing down. So your natural increase is higher but it's shrinking. It's still pretty big at the, at the uh, beginning of it. And now it's pretty small when you get to the end. And again, population in total, it's slowing down. Wow. Um, once you reach stage three, you don't really hear of a famine anymore unless something crazy happens or it's a small area and something a little bit crazy happens. Like, I don't know, if a town hurricane all the roads are gone they might have a famine um but you're not going to see widespread famines anymore unless the world is ending there it has not rained for the past seven years and in everywhere rain is gone i got rid of rain um you'll also see development these are still developing countries um they're not like super high end but they're definitely not down there anymore 
and the people have access to medicine. Medicine has been researched, all that cool stuff. It's been made, and people have access to it. If I have the flu, I don't have to say goodbye to my wife and kids and go dig myself a little hole to lie in and wait. Uh, I go down to the store, and I buy some medicine. I go to my doctor or something, uh, take away the symptoms, and I have good enough health care to, to where I probably won't die. Um, probably won't die. I might have to dig that hole just in case. You also see uh, a much stronger economy developing as opposed to this very small thing we've seen in the last stage. You don't really hear about the economic powerhouse of Namibia. You will hear about Brazil being uh, a pretty big player. They're not like one of the big boys, but they're up there. Uh, and do you also see the movement, the movement to a more secondary economy with the spread of industry around the country? They can now afford to move from getting raw materials to making something out of the raw materials. They're exporting goods now as opposed to the stuff needed to make goods. They might like have an internal sort of thing where they can get the goods from themselves. They might be buying the goods from someone else or not the goods, the raw materials to make the goods or getting the raw materials from themselves. But they're exporting primarily goods at this point. And the majority of their employment is in creating goods, is in the factories, that, that cool sort of thing. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, so people aren't super concerned about necessities. They aren't thinking, uh, am I going to be able to, uh, I don't know, not lose 80 pounds this year? Uh, it, are all of my ribs going to be showing? Do I have a roof to sleep under? Is my landlord going to kick down my neighborhood and say, you got to go? They're generally pretty secure. It's not great. They're not like America where I decide... Yeah, I just feel like buying a bunch of luxury items because I'm bored, but they don't have to worry about any of the big important stuff to a massive extent. They still got to like, oh, am I going to be able to pay my rent? Probably. Uh, but they're not really concerned about dying suddenly. You might have that concern in a, in a stage two country because that will happen on, from time to time. You might just die. Um, and also in these, you we'll fairly often see um, a couple of small areas that are suddenly very developed. They're, these like cities are stages ahead, are a stage ahead of the actual country. You can see uh, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, I would say. I, don't quote me on this one. I, I, this is a bit of a thought experiment on my part. So I was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. I should probably put this in because it makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, Rio de Janeiro has a lot of service uh, employment that's a tertiary economy as opposed to secondary and uh, wages and all that cool stuff. You can just go buy some luxury goods because you feel like buying some luxury goods. It's a lot more similar to these stage four countries than the rest of the country it's in. Examples, as I said, Brazil, South Africa, that was the big thing in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, you can see. North Africa, yeah. Uh, Bos Botswana, uh, Mexico is definitely one of them. Mexico City is pretty big. That might be one of the ones that I would say is an exception uh, because it's it's a massive city compared to the rest of the country. Uh, these are definitely significantly developed countries. Stage three is where you really look at it and say, yeah, it's a developed country. They know what they're doing. This is a picture of Brazil. Uh, you can see it's a lot better than what we had in Nicaragua. Uh, your house isn't going to fall down if someone breathes on it too hard. But they aren't great. They're just... A decent house you could live there uh it's gonna provide everything you need it's pretty all right you also see the families grow a lot smaller uh this is gonna be because you can't afford to have children more with this prevalence of an actual economy people just don't care as much they don't need to they don't have the time to so families are going to grow smaller very quickly as you saw oh where was i yes uh Women's rights. Women's rights generally begins to be a topic once you reach the third stage um, because women aren't going to normally have access to the job market at this point. And they're going to start to say with this massive growth of the job market, uh, I want in that because normally before they might be on the farm. So you'll see that a lot in Europe. But after that, they're just kind of left out, especially with the Renaissance in Europe. That's where they kind of decided you're done. 
Uh, and then once you reach here, there's a resurgence of, I want back in. I used to be in. You guys kicked me out. What, what's the deal here? You you might not actually achieve women's rights here, but the, the idea is going to start spreading. Healthcare. Healthcare is so much better. You have medicine just available as opposed to before where if you were reasonably wealthy, you could go get medicine. Now it's you can get it if you're middle class or I guess not dirt poor. Uh, it's there. It's not crazy. Unless you have something really bad, like, uh, I don't know. This is gone. I This is gone. I might not be able to afford getting it back. I, they're probably going to give it back and then just say you're in debt forever. But, I mean, epidemiological theory. This is now the age of degenerative and man-made diseases. That's a really fancy word, huh? It means you have cancer, and that's what kills you at this point. You're going to start to see a big drop off of infectious diseases because they can combat it now. But now that you're living longer, things like heart disease and cancer that you have to live longer to encounter are going to start showing up and they, they can't do much about that anymore. They could, if you got, I don't know, the plague, <laughs> it's a weird one, but yeah, they could, they could help you out. If you got cancer, they can try, but there's not a crazy amount they can do. If you have heart disease, I, I don't know what we're supposed to do for you. We can try to help you out here, but you're probably not going to make it too long. Stage four. Again, we need stage three uh, in the chat. I don't think anyone's going to need stage three because there's no one here. So that's pretty all right. Oh, wait, a fourth person just registered. What's up? I'm going to assume your name is Jesus. Hey, can I, can I close that? I can close that. What's up, my boy? You're here. You're the only one. Uh, if, if you're here because you didn't understand something in particular, I'm on stage four right now. I can backtrack a little bit if you need me to work with you. But until I get that kind of cue, I'm just going to start on stage four. So stage four is going to be this this nice blue bit of the chart. You're good. All right, man. If you're good, then you're good. Uh, I'm going to give you the pause moment in the VOD because there is such low... Uh, low viewership if you're in the chat i would say it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty nice exercise what are you seeing in this in this little chart the nice fiveable blue section what can you pick out here what's happening and for the vod you should pause it right now i'm really glad you had that nice think vod i'm sure you got some great yeah you in particular you had a great think about that one you had some awesome ideas i'm really proud of you for that and now we're here there's someone in the chat, which is a big change of pace from two minutes ago. So I'm, I'm going to wait to see if they're saying anything. If they're not saying anything, I don't blame them because then sets some explanation to explain everything. You don't want to do that. It's a waste of time. Uh, I don't know. The typing period has generally gone by. It's time to It's time to resume. So when you look at death rate, it's starting. It's almost completely flat at this point. It stomped its massive drop. It's chilling. And the birth rate, it's really starting to chill. Especially by the end of it, it's just flat. It's dumb. It doesn't feel like falling anymore. It caught itself. It's learned how to fly, mayhaps. And then when you look at the total population, it's finally camping off. It's not going up anymore. It's just there. Uh, and the natural increase is about zero. Maybe just a very small amount. It's not zero, but it's not worth noting particularly. It's very, very small, which means that when we look at the characteristics, again, very low birth, very low death rates, and the population is only, only going to grow extremely slowly. You're going to need a long time to see any significant increase across the whole country, whatever you're doing, area that's in this stage. And you're going to see the rise of antibiotic resistance at this point um, by the end of it. Not necessarily at the beginning, except for uh, things that do this more contemporarily. Are, that's going to be a problem because you've had antibiotics for long enough for things to develop a resistance to it. Antibiotic resistance, uh, in case you don't know, bacteria that doesn't die when you put it in something that's supposed to kill it. Uh, infant mortality, that's going to be extremely rare. If you're born, you're probably going to make it. And you're going to see people start making it into the 70s, which is a massive achievement. 
for coming from the tribes where once you were 40, they, they started digging your, your, uh, your hole in the ground. They started making your coffin. Your time is up, John. It's all over. You're 70 years old and you still got a little bit of time left. You're still going to do something. You're going to be able to tell about the good old days when, I don't know, the bacteria wasn't resistant to antibiotics. Man, that was a crazy time, huh? And this is going to be your sign of this is a rich country. This They got money. That's a lot of cash. They're going to be extremely developed. Looking at some examples of just how developed they are. We're going to be looking at the United States of America. They're pretty developed. You're probably from there. Yeah, you. Uh, and you who aren't from the United States. What are you doing? Man? What are you doing? This is just the first example. Why are you not on the first example? Uh, France would be one of these. Canada would be one of these. UK, all that cool stuff. It It's a country of note. These are the big players. They have the money. They have the economy. Again, tertiary economy is a tertiary economy. It's going to be very service-based as opposed to making something, uh, getting something. They're doing something now. And you also start to see a big rise in quaternary and quinary, um, what is it, economic activities. Again, that's uh, the field of computers, information technology, and it is management positions. Do you, those will become a lot bigger because suddenly you have the ability to make these small businesses that need them and you have the computer businesses that need people to work on those whereas before your country couldn't really afford a massive amount of them you might have only seen them on little small levels uh, the children per family you're going to see them just barely over the uh, rate of replacement on average the rate of replacement is of course two because two parents if you want to replace them when they die you need two kids from them on average, you're going to be get just barely above that. The population is going to grow, but not really. Um, here, um, gender and racial equality is usually achieved around here. Uh, it, you might have gotten it sooner if you were uh, if you were a lucky country, but usually the movement starts in the third uh, in the third stage, and we achieve something here. And you'll start to see women in the workforce. You start to see minorities in the workforce just everywhere. Everyone's working all the jobs. The economy can grow because of that. There's just a lot of employees that you couldn't get before. Actually, you couldn't get at least 50% of them before. And as for your cool epidemiological theory, this is what we would call the age of delayed degenerative diseases. That one's fairly self-explanatory because if we just came from the age of degenerative diseases, this is delayed. So... These, this heart disease, this cancer, all of that stuff, they're still going to be the big killer, uh, chronic conditions, it says here, but you can keep them alive for significantly longer. They don't just get it and you got a week. I'm sorry, man. You got to go. It's the end. Um, you got a decent amount of time once you get these diseases. I see the, I see the people go up and they're gone. I'm lecturing to myself. It's cool. <laughs> um, yes. Once people get it, it isn't a death sentence right away. They might recover from it. It's significantly more likely they're going to recover from it because your, um, what is it called? Your uh, healthcare has improved very much. You have very modern techniques here. Uh, but even if they do die, they're going to die later than they would have otherwise. Stage five, the big one. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to say this now. The one thing you really want to get down with stage five is that's possible. Uh, we see a couple countries that could be going into a supposed stage five, but we can't say for certain that stage five is a real thing that exists. We just think it probably is. That's the best we can really do as far as that goes. I mean, what are you gonna do? We just haven't been around long enough to see someone get that developed. Look at it here. Uh, you on the VOD, because there's there's no one in the stream to answer, which is, that's pretty cool, huh? Um, You on the VOD, pause now. That was an excellent answer. That must have taken a lot of effort from you, I'm sure. But you did a great job. You came up with that all by yourself, except you. You remember the teacher said it. Come on, man. You got you got to really analyze. What are you doing? What are you doing in AP Human Geography? Not analyzing stuff. You got to be kidding me. 
So yes, you'll see on the bottom declining question mark. As I said, question mark because is does this happen? I don't know. But when you look at the when you look at the death rate, it just kind of is a straight horizontal line now. It it's not falling anymore, but it's very low and it's very constant and stable. That's that's sort of done its course now. You saw it fall very fast before. Ooh, I almost dropped that. That would have been loud. Um, yeah. We saw it do its like its whole act already. It's done falling. Um, but this whole birth rate thing, this this whole being born part, it's still dropping just pretty slowly. But then something really crazy happens that it doesn't happen except for very small areas in stage one. Where I don't know, they got in a big war with all the other tribes over there in Eastern, and they, they fought, and suddenly the death rate spiked because everyone was getting stabbed, and then the population went down from that quite a bit, uh, more than they could birth for a while, like maybe the Black Death, you, you didn't really get all your population back from that for a while, a couple hundred years. <laughs> Yeah, all that crazy stuff we saw in there. It's just a constant now, possibly. Because this is this natural increase is gone. It's natural decrease. The population is just going down constantly. There's no one being born to replace you when you die. What are you going to do? And again, the total population, you can see it. It leveled out, and then it started going down. It's forming a big upside-down U. It's forming a big bell curve in the population and we're all going to die whoa that that's the sort of gist you want to get from this so moving on to characteristics again very low birth and very low death rates i to give you a proper comparison i would say extremely low birth and very low death rates the birth rates have gone lower than the death rates that that's not supposed to happen that's not right what's going on here the population is going down that we've never seen that before, at least not for an extended period of time. And for the causes of death, you're still seeing the same stuff. Antibiotic resistance is normally by this point quite a big issue. If you made it this far, it's not killing everyone, but like it's something to take note of that this could kill everyone. Heart disease usually still the biggest. Cancers are very up there. And this is going to be extremely wealthy countries per capita. They're going to be very developed. They're going to have a lot of time to have been developed, feel it all, and just start chilling and not having kids anymore. Somewhere, this is this is uh, this is Germany. Yeah, this picture is of Germany, right? Because one of the first example is Germany, and Japan is also one of them. Those are the only ones I can recall. Maybe Italy was one of them. I don't think so. Um, that you really hear about being. Stage five, ooh, uh, those are the proposed countries slipping into there. Again, they're those are quite wealthy states. They're very developed. They kind of just got bombed during the Second World War and had to be extremely developed because everything they could make in those big cities that were removed is now super modern because they didn't have to tear anything down. They got someone else to do it for them against their will. The children per family is under this replacement rate of two. Um, if you get two people that, I don't know, could potentially have kids, on average, they're going to have 1.9 or less. Which means population is, of course, going down. That's very important. That's why I'm reiterating it so much. You got to know population isn't supposed to do that, but it is. What are you supposed to do about here? This means that the people who are working have to retire a lot later because if they retire at the same age, then the economy is just going to crash. There's no one doing any work anymore, at least not nearly as much as we had a couple of years ago. And this also puts a lot more strain on younger generations to support the, the retirement benefits and all that stuff that you need when you retire as of the older generations, because you're usually you're paying into this throughout your whole life uh, to support people who are being old not not doing much they need the money uh, and then once you're there you need people who are young and doing all the work to to pay a little bit to you so you can keep living a comfortable life without having to work until you're 93 break your back and die lifting some bricks that would be really unfortunate but suddenly 
this, this usually works because there's more people every generation. So the payment stays the same. It stays pretty constant. But if there's less people, that means the payment has to start going up on them. And if then there's less, so the payment can get very, very high per person. And this puts a lot of strain on them economically. This makes it very hard for them to do things for themselves. Uh, we're still here in the age of delayed degenerative diseases. Uh, you're going to see continued um, ability to maybe cure some of these, um, but primarily you're going to get them later. And if you get them, you're going to live longer if you aren't cured. Survival time with them is going to be vastly improved. You might have had a year before, and now, yeah, man, you got 10 years left, do whatever, you got time. It's You could have died in 10 years if you didn't have this. This this made no difference on you, except maybe your thigh hurts a bit for 10 years. I would ask someone if they need me to go back, but this has been a pretty solo lecture. This has been pretty I'm by myself, which is practice time. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a hundred percent on what I'm supposed to do here. But I mean I will give out like a Discord code at the end. I was really counting on a little bit of chat interaction to bring this to the hour point. I'm not hundred percent sure on what I'm supposed to do at this point. But what's gonna contribute to the greatest amount of human deaths for countries or areas found in stage one and two of the demographic transition model? Pause. You are exactly correct, except you, you're not. I'm sorry, dude. Oh, that just wasn't right. The, the big killer, it's going to be this crazy thing called communicable diseases, bacteria, viruses, that sort of thing, fungus, parasite, I don't know. Get sick, drop dead. Not a good time. And at that point, there's not a lot you can do about it unless you're very wealthy, which you're never really going to see in a stage one area. You're going to be wealthy enough for a lot of firewood, uh, I got a big shack, that sort of thing, because you're not very developed. And if you are developed in stage two, not developed, if you're very wealthy in stage two, you can sort of get that kind of thing. You can see people in stage two countries who have these big manners and all this modern stuff, because developed countries have made it, and now they can just have access to it if they have the money for it. But most people aren't going to have the money for it, so most people are just going to die if they get a disease. They just can't do anything. A number went up. Yo, What's up, Sherelle? <laughs> this has been a pretty cool solo lecture. Uh, all right, bring it back up. Yeah. I, I really hope you on the VOD did a good job on that question. Personally, I believe in you. I think you did great. You're going to get a five on the exam. I believe in you. You're, gonna, you're going to be streaming AP Human Geography next year. Question two and sort of three. <laughs> At which demographic transition stage... Does an international economy begin to develop? International meaning that they're doing things outside of their little group, outside of their country. Uh, you won't really see borders before international economies usually, other than very strange subjective things. But anyway, uh, pause pause your uh, your video now. All right, and we're back just like that. It really is that easy to answer the question. So. You, who said stage two of the demographic transition model, where they have a very, uh, I'm not going to say that because it's question three, where, where they have this these cool industries, then they start having an economy. They can trade things now outside of uh, firewood fish. They can say uh, eight tons of coal, many dollar, give me the dollar, right? That's the answer. I, that's all I can really say for that one. It's question three. We're, we're on to question three. You're so close to being done, right? For each demographic transition stage, where are they getting their money from? What's the source of their economic power? Whatever economic power they have. It doesn't have to be big. It just has to be there. Pause the video now. And we're back. We're back with the answer to question three. What's the answer to question three? I hope you got a really good answer. I'm sure you did. But the answer to question three is, in fact, stage two, it's raw resources. It's your 
plants, it's your coal, it's your ores, all that cool stuff. Whereas opposed to stage three, you start making goods. It's Hello Kitty merchandise. Oh, it's car. All that, all that groovy stuff, right? Groovy, of course, being the best. Exactly. Hello Kitty merchandise. It's the, it's the perfect thing to base an economy off of. Honestly. If I was making a country, I would probably make it illegal to make anything that isn't Hello Kitty merchandise. Uh, any kind of goods will work for that one. Then you get to stage four, and you see a massive drop-off in industry as a profession, and in uh, raw materials gathering as a profession. There's not a lot of farmers in the U.S. Um, you will see instead a lot of service employees, a lot of computer technology com employees, and a lot of management positions open up because suddenly you can just make a company and have be reasonably sure that it isn't going to go awfully. And if you make a company, you can manage the company. That's opened up a pretty new sort of thing because you wouldn't have the ability to have more than a handful of people making their own st companies and whatnot in earlier things. Stage three, you're going to start to see the rise of it. Stage four, you're going to see it's there. It's happening. Again, computers, you have the money for your country to invest in all these cool computer things. You're going to see start to rise, rise up in stage three. You're going to see it's here in stage four. There are computers and you can work on them for job. And just service industries, doctors going to be a much bigger profession. You're providing some on the surface of you aren't going to die. That, that's what we do at that point. What we got? Name for phase one of the DTM. Think. You had yourself a great thunk. I'm going to look to the chat. I got one person here. This is the last question. I got one more question. After. That's pretty cool. I'm going to look to the chat for a second. I get it. They don't answer. It's the only person. We don't got much left. They teach this. I don't need to answer it. Uh, we're we're going to... That's a dust cloud. That's pretty cool. You watching the VOD, you got your answer. Retransition. Now you teach this, so this might be something, but the way I was taught it was that it was high stationary because, of course, high birth death rates and uh, population size is very stationary. Yes, all right, cool. And that is that is it, high stationary. You watching the VOD, if you got high stationary, I'm extremely proud of you because you got the correct answer. Good job, you watching the VOD. The final question. We are here. I guess the final two questions. What are the negative impacts of entering the fifth stage of demographic transition on the people who are in the area entering that stage? And how would a country go about preventing a shift to this sort of situation? That isn't very advantageous, as I just said. You got to figure out how. There are a couple right answers to the second one. There are a couple right answers to the first one. So you, if I don't mention it, you still might be right. Just do some critical thinking right there. As for the critical thinking, you should begin. Wow, you're back, and you did some critical thinking. The chat also did some critical thinking. Your population is not growing. It is an elderly population. That is correct. A country is going to have a lot harder time being productive to... Are with a very old population, they can't do much. Some other things just on the citizens. If you are one of these elderly people, you're going to have to work as an elderly person, which isn't a great time. Um, but there's not much else you can do because the uh, the retirement benefits that are that you paid for as a, as a young man, woman, other, right, all that crazy stuff that you paid for for those people who were retiring. There's no one there to pay it for you. So you have to work longer for enough to be built up for you to make it. Or at least for the time, you have to make shorter so the payment will work. And then this is also going to put the strain on people who have to pay it. Because now you, as your, as your young working self, uh, have a much larger payment to make than the last person who was at your position did because there's less people to pay for this big goal you have to hit. 
And so that's going to skyrocket. There's a lot of strain on all these people. As for second one, Chad has said, you might need to use the guest workers. Yes, as for your economy, guest workers are a very popular solution. What a guest worker is, you take someone from another country and you say, how would you like to work in my country? And they hopefully say, I would love to work in your country. These are usually from less developed countries, so you can get some nice benefits for them out of it. That's that's why they would accept. Might not be able to get a job where they are, or just might just have more benefits because they're in a nicer area. All right. Um, as for just the country as a whole, you will often see the increase in immigration to stop this strain on the younger generations and to ease the minds of the older. Um, or you will see what is called a pro-natal series of policies ensued by the government. This is the government trying to make benefits to having kids or at least remove, I guess, uh, cons of having children. Because normally if you have a kid, suddenly you have to take time off work that you can't take that you can't take to care for this child. There's just no way for you to do it. In two years since I lost the country. <laughs> it's that easy. Hey man. You already taught me enough about Australia. This is Cheryl saying I'm, I'm challenging her here. I, I, my entire knowledge base of Australia has been completely shattered here. So I'm just returning the favor, right? So where was that? Yes, uh, pronatal policies. So if you can't take this time off work to have this child, then you're probably just not gonna have the kid. Uh, it would have a lot of detriments to you. The government's trying to make those not there to make having kids be possibly a lucrative endeavor but at least not a detrimental endeavor because people are probably going to like having them anyways. So if it's not going to hurt them, they they'll start doing it. Uh, a country that's sort of in between this, you would look at Germany because they're, they're going into stage five, possibly there's a bit of panic there. Of course, they're taking quite a lot of uh, refugees, the whole Syrian refugee crisis. That's where they can get a lot of their immigration from to stop the population from shrinking down. Uh, and you will also see um, them, them getting uh i don't i have an article about it over there but i don't feel like rummaging through stuff i don't know if i have an article about it over there anymore but they started putting in these pronatal policies mothers are going to get more time off work to care for their child and it's going to be paid they're not going to have to live in squalor because of their child and they're going to also be able to have access to experienced mothers to help them through the process of having this kid so it isn't such a massive burden later on all right, we've. <clears throat> my throat is getting real sore. I'm sorry if I start sounding sick at the very end here. But we have reached the end, so I'd like to quickly reiterate that you should be following Think Fiveable on all of their social medias. Their social medias, of course, being Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. It is Think Fiveable on all of these all of these cool things. Um, no one's really going to see this, but I mean, I can get the. Sherelle, you're, you're higher up than me. Am I allowed to read off a link to the uh, to the Fiveable Discord on here? Or uh, should I just take a pass on that unless someone's actively here and asks for it? Uh, but I'll wait for a response on that. Okay. Share? Okay, cool. That is something I'm allowed to I'm allowed to do. Let me let me get a link up. That's how you do it. If you want to do it, well, let me do this. You will go to https colon double backslash discord dot gg. That's the normal part. Then you go slash g capital v capital g capital k capital h cap, uh, lowercase p lowercase y. Uh, I will type that in the chat. Yeah, I don't know if they'll be able to see that kind of thing. Oh yeah, because they're on here. I didn't think about that. That's such a such a good. Point that I did not think of. G, B, G, K, H, P, Y. Let me see if that's working. That is in fact working. And that is our fiveable Discord. If you want to join it, it's there. I'm on there. If you need to contact me personally, I don't know why you would. You can go to my uh, to my Twitter, but I'm not super active on there. If you need something from me, then I'll try to help you out with it. Uh, 
I am Squapple, the two that is S Q U Apple, the two. I'm putting it in chat. I don't know if you guys can see that stuff or not. I would assume so because fiveable replays and whatnot. But much more reliably on the fiveable Discord that I just said, I am Mr. Bucket on there. You can get in touch with me. I will be there if you need something from me. Quick recap. This is not my slides. This is the stream yet again. Uh, five stages of DTM. We went over that. That's that's how we began this. We after right after our pre uh, pre stream assessment, we went there, and then we also went over a little bit of the relationship of economic growth and how people are living, how they're uh, how they're not dying, death or the lack thereof, based on economy, because that's really what the uh, the demographic transition model is tracking: uh, how your economy is doing, how you're developing which has a lot to do with your economy, uh, and how people are living or not. And then we also sort of mix in a little bit of the epidemiological theory. That is the same chart we were looking at. I want to make that clear, but it is not trying to relate your development. It's trying to show what's killing people. Uh, that was the age of famine and pestilence. That was the age of uh, delayed degenerative diseases. Those are all parts of the epidemiological transition model. And that, that is where I leave you, all right? I got all my slides. They're gone. There's no more I can teach you unless you personally get in touch with me. So I bid, I should probably, yeah, okay, this is how I do that. I bid you all a fairly fond farewell. That was not supposed to happen. And I will see you at, during my next stream. I'm not sure where it is. Enjoy your day. I'll see you.